Senior video producer for Chow. Today I'm in the Seaport District of New York City to meet with world-renowned chef Jordan Frozolone, who's gonna teach me how to make his celebrated cacio pepe dish. Chef Jordan is the executive chef at 10 Corso Como, an imported Italian half restaurant, half gallery concept. For those of you afraid to make pasta sauces because you think it's a long simmered affair, you'd be surprised how easy this dish is. You only need four ingredients and a couple of minutes of your time. The magic is all in the details. One of the things that you know made me come here today to learn from you how to make this dish is the cacio pepe from Ten Corso made the New York's best list. How does that feel? <laughs> <laughs> to be on that list is an amazing honor, especially with such a, uh, a pedestrian dish, so to speak. I mean, so many people do it, and it's so simple. And to have been recognized for doing something very well that is something so simple. I think that's a bigger honor. Yeah, it makes me so happy, and um, it's what I've always strived to do. You know, there's like make it simple and clean and not fussy and not innovative and just make a really great dish of food. All right. I think the dog wants something. <laughs> oh. Good? I'm gonna learn from you how to make this so then I can do it in my house and be like, guess who taught me how to make Perfect. cacio pepe? And it's so easy. Thank you so much for having me in your kitchen. I'm so excited to attempt to make pasta from scratch for the first time. This is my very first time doing this. Uh, you can do this in the traditional method, which is the well method, which we'll mm -hmm. do here. Um, or you can also do it in uh, any sort of uh, mixer, blender, KitchenAid type thing with a dough cook, like you're gotcha. making any sort of... Yeah, like the people that have the KitchenAid to yeah. like mix it and then put the attachment and... That's it. And much easier and uh, since I want to learn how to do it with so my this own is hands. A, this yes so we make a very basic pasta dough mm -hmm. we have um, all-purpose flour uh, about two cups of it okay about a tablespoon of salt and uh, two whole eggs all right and that makes about uh, this will make about enough pasta for six to eight people depending on okay. what your a, portions much, are <laughs> what your portions are and you know how much food you're maybe you don't want to share with anybody <laughs> uh, right I'm not gonna pretend I'm gonna become a pro at this. I just wanna, you know, I wanna put my hands on <laughs> <laughs> All right, so start with the flour. Okay. On a cutting board or any sort of large surface area that you may have. The name well method, because hence the well in the middle of the flour, where you're gonna put the eggs. So, so you have your flour salt mix. You build yep. the well there. Slowly add the egg into it. You do it too fast, what happens? So then if you do it too fast, you know, if the egg runs, it may break through part of the wall. And then... And goodbye your eggs. Well, well yeah, it's just <laughs> gonna make your life a little bit more difficult than it needs to be. What I'm gonna have you do is just slowly start mixing the eggs. And while you're mixing the eggs, just slowly start incorporating a little bit of the flour into it. like a pro. <laughs> kind of. Aside from breaking the well, losing your eggs, <laughs> What are the things that people mess up when they're trying to do pasta from scratch? Um, like, what are easy mistakes people make? And you know, letting the dough rest is important because then once you sheet the pasta, it's not going to kind of like go back onto itself. If it hasn't rested enough, it really has a tendency to sheet out and then become a lot smaller. It'll and contract. bounce back or exactly, whatever. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So that's it. <laughs> that's it for good. So there's the final ball. Gorgeous. We have a, an electric pasta sheeter. Uh, there's obviously um, uh, smaller ones that are more practical for a home cook on the market. Some with a hand right. crank, some with um, that are electricity, some attachments, attachments to, to, to the kitchen aids, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, so this is just going to sheet the pasta into long sheets. We use this and we make lasagna sheets, we make shapes like just like for hand cut, like tagliatelle, so a wide variety. There you go, some tagliatelle. I need some tagliatelle. We can take it home for you. Yeah. 
Oh yes, <laughs> I'm gonna brag about this today. First thing you do is drop the pasta uh, to the recommended cooking time, either on the package or uh, if it's a fresh pasta, you know, it could take anywhere from one to two minutes. Uh, if it's a uh, drier pasta, a cooking time could typically be, you know, eight, 10, 12 minutes, depending on the pasta. Uh, so the pasta goes down. Take a little bit of the pasta water. You can see there's a lot of starch inside mm -hmm. of the water itself, which is uh, very, very useful in the in the sauce making process because you need the actual starch to help thicken the uh, the sauce. That's your thickening agent there. One of the thickening agents. Okay. Yeah. So the water and then cracked black pepper. We actually use 24 packs of black pepper out of this pepper mill. So I love the exact number of it. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this is the sauce. That's all it is. Is pasta water and pepper. I'll bring this up to a boil and then I'll pull this sauce off and once the pasta is done cooking, uh, we'll cook it for um, ultimately like a minute less than uh, the desired cooking time and we'll finish the pasta in the sauce. Because it'll still keep cooking it's once you... It's still keep cooking and then it'll also give us time to adjust the sauce to the consistency that we have. Got it. Today. Okay. The spaghetti that we use, it has a lot of dexterity and it, it's very um, resilient. So we have some time to... Okay, kind to of adjust, help right, it or right. fix it exactly. if you need to. Exactly. That's why uh, an extruded pasta or a drier pasta is almost better than a super fresh pasta. So sheep's pecorino is the traditional cheese used in this dish. What does that bring to the dish? It it's really has a very salty flavor profile. Um, and you know, the saltiness and the brininess of that cheese specifically kind of um, is one of the defining factors of it. Mm -hmm. um, people either, it's not uncommon for people to use Parmigiano um, or people to use a combination of both Parmigiano and pecorino. And pecorino. Uh, but traditionally it was always pecorino. Um, gotcha. Because back in those days, Parmigiano may or may not have existed, but it certainly wasn't was traveling not as around available Italy as, as it exactly. Um, and the shepherds again were raising sheep, so that's where they that's were what they the had cheese. exactly. They weren't herding cows. Okay. Way back when they first started to when this first dish was starting to come to origin, like they were actually started with a little bit of lard. Um, so some pig fat okay. in order to kind of start and emulsify the dish as well. So, so you know, using butter say, now, yeah? Yeah. It doesn't I guess, seem I, that I, far off. It does not. Yeah. And uh, again, a strict traditionalist would say absolutely not. <laughs> um, but who are we to say? When a dish is so simple, it's so easy to screw it up, right? Precisely. Because if you miss one step or you have one thing off, the whole thing is thrown off, right? right? And there's really no room to hide. So, you know, there, and there's a lot of things that can be messed up. If, uh, as you can see, if the if the cheese goes in and it starts to curdle, it doesn't make this nice, unctuous, creamy sauce. Mm -hmm. If there's not enough pepper, it's kind of lacking. If there's not enough cheese, if the sauce is not cooked properly, there's really nowhere to go. Right, so, and there's no sauce to hide it because the sauce is one yeah, of the main and things. And the pasta's cooked the way it's cooked. The pasta's about done. Add the sauce back on. So you can see, the pasta is gonna start to suck up the rest of this water. And once it gets to a point where it's a little bit thicker than this is when I'm gonna to start to add the cheese into it. So then at this point, I'm gonna to start to add the cheese to it off of the heat. I am so excited to eat this. All right, you wanna plate this? Yep. You're gonna have to teach me how to do the... The, the, the sauce? That's uh, the, the toss. Put the the front of the lid a little bit down, or the front of the pan a little mm -hmm. bit down. Yes, and then toss like that. There you go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's You gotta not, start somewhere. That's not right. <laughs> oh, the beautiful twirling too. So again, the sauce, a little bit saucier than you might think. Just cause again, the, the pasta is going to continue to cook, continue to absorb the sauce, and then you're gonna finish it with some more cheese, and more black pepper, and voila. Ooh. Mm, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. Super cheesy. The pepper level does have to be perfect, right? Like, you don't have enough pepper here, 
I mean, it becomes baby food, right? Then it's just yeah, the then pasta, it's the pasta with, with the cheese. With cheese. 